In the United States, since abortion was legalized in 1973, there have been more than 60 million abortions. Okay, um, I mean, the, the 60 million. Um, th this, at least, in, uh, and this is not a worldwide data. This should terrify us uh, because this is 60 million human beings made in the image of God, and and Christians ought to have something to say about it. Um, let's see. Okay. So in the next section, I'm going to speak about the zygote embryo and the fetus. Okay. According to the substance view, a human being is intrinsically valuable because of the sort of thing it is, and human being remains that sort of thing as long as it exists. And within Christian theology, this continues, right? Like when we die, we don't stop being human. We continue to be human forever um, because that's the kind of thing we are. Um, and, and, and in part two, I, I think I uh, presented the substance view being way better than the body view or the memory view because they have major issues, okay? So a person is a unity throughout time. Over the years, your body parts come and go and your various mental states may come and go, okay? Someone who has Alzheimer's or dementia doesn't stop being who they were. That's still our grandfather, our grandmother, uh, even though they don't remember even themselves. So your memories, your personality traits, they all come and go. But they are all aspects of the same person because they all belong to the same enduring I, according to the substance view. Since the notion of the enduring I is true, coupled with the notion uh, that a substance has capacities that not, might not be realized, I think it's reasonable to conclude that the zygote, embryo, or child are substances. This is important because a lot of people say, well, it's just a bunch of cells. They're not developed yet. They don't have you know, recognizable body parts and, and things of this sort. Those don't matter, okay? Because a one-year-old doesn't have the abilities and capacities as a five-year-old, and a five-year-old doesn't have the same things as a 20-year-old or a 50-year-old, okay? So, so we have to work ourselves back instead of this way. We have to work ourselves back, and um, we might not know when these things start. I don't think we even need to know when they start. I don't think that even matters. Uh, the reality is they have capacities, and all they need is nurture and care, and we will grow up to be what we were intended to be in the first place, and what we were, what we were designed to be in the first place. Uh, in the next section, there's a conversation about the soul, and Christians are divided on this, by the way. And when I say Christians, I mean Orthodox, Catholic, Protestant. Not everybody is in agreement, even within those camps, right? Not all Protestants agree the same, and not even all Catholics and Orthodox agree on the same. Um, like, for example, Thomas Aquinas had a certain view uh, about ensoulment, okay? When the soul, he, he, he believed that God created a soul separately and put it in the body. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Uh huh. Will you be like public speaker? Yes. Okay. I want to pass that message properly. Thank you. Thank you, and sorry for it. It's okay. So, Thomas Aquinas, the great philosopher and theologian, thought that God created a soul separately and then placed it in the body at a certain time in development within the womb. But Aquinas would have never argued that you can, you can terminate a pregnancy before the soul is placed into the body. You cannot terminate a pregnancy before the soul. Cannot. Because that person being developed, even without a soul, is still a living human. Okay. Uh, plus, Thomas Aquinas didn't have all the scientific data that you and I have. I think we, we know a little bit of, uh, about human development uh, than he did. Um, <clears throat> so even if we were to conclude, which I conclude, that I, I don't know when the soul comes into existence. I have no idea. But that's not going to somehow stop me or, or give an argument to have an abortion. And I'll use this example. If I approached you and gave you a little button to press, and I said, hey, across the street, there's a building, and I've put bomb, uh, I put bombs in the building, and when you hit this button, the building's gonna explode. 
And before you pressed it, you said, Arthur, um, are there people in that building? And I said, I don't know. Maybe there are people, maybe there aren't. It's like one in a hundred chance there might be someone. I don't think any reasonable moral individual would say, whatever, and just press the button. I mean, you would want to be 100% sure that no, there's no one in that building. Okay? And so th this is just an example you can use. Even if you're not sure when the soul is within a person in the womb, if you don't know, don't do anything because you don't want to have blood on your hands. And as a society, we should move with caution. If we don't know, let's say we don't know, but say it's better for us to care rather than to be kind of violent and, and say, hey, it happens. Uh, there's some issues with when the soul, how the soul, uh, how the embryo develops and what can happen with the soul, uh, namely because uh, you can have zygotes who multiply and who collapse. Okay, there's biological reasons, um, I, I think, that are challenging to Christians who believe that you have a soul at conception. And that's why I don't necessarily take a stance on when a soul, uh, when a person has a soul, but again, we shouldn't act rashly, we should act with compassion and care, um, as we would in any other situation when human life was on the line. Okay? So finally, I'm going to give a couple of arguments from the Bible. So in, um, in the book of Genesis, here's what it says. It says, Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife, because she couldn't have kids, she was barren. And the Lord answered him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled in the womb. And here's what the Lord says. Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples will be separated from your body. And one people shall be stronger than the other. Notice in this text, God refers to the babies in the womb, right? As nations and people, not a bunch of cells. <laughs> okay? He see, God sees that these are human beings. Um, we get Psalms where the psalmist, in a very poetic way, is referring to God's involvement in the development of the human person. David says, you knit me in my mother's womb. Right? You were actively working in, in my development. I mean, again, this is poetic language, but it goes to say that God is actually involved in the development of every single human being. And he, he, he kind of doesn't see us as, um, you know, like, like objects, like this podium. He sees us, even in the womb, as people. And someone mentioned this, let's not forget that our Lord Jesus Christ went through this process. Like, we don't believe in the incarnation of Jesus when Jesus was born. Right? We, we believe... Yeah, so we, we don't just believe that uh, Jesus is the God-man after birth. We believe Jesus is the God-man at conception. Right? The, whole, the, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will conceive. Right? So it's conception. So we're talking... Uh, uh, zygote, embryo, fetus. By the way, fetus is in Latin just means baby. Uh, so um, I don't know why people use it incorrectly because you know it, it means baby. It's it's a human being. Um, so we, we have to have a realistic view as Christians that Jesus went through the same process. And and in conclusion, maybe like some of the politics, I will mention this. Um, I don't think we need to come up with new, this is my personal opinion, I don't think we need to come up with new legislation about abortion. What we need to do is, is strongly define what a person is. And if we define what a person is, and if we define a person is a person at conception, then we already have laws that say you shouldn't murder innocent people. So it will just fall in line there. You shouldn't be murdering innocent people. And since an embryo, uh, since a, a fetus and a zygote are persons, then it would be wrong to quote-unquote terminate them. Um, I, I think that's a euphemism. It's, it's murder them. It should be, we should use strong language because it's something strong that's happening. Thank you guys very much. Christianuli etikis twatsatsiridan. 
ყოველთვის მართებულია, ყოველთვის ლეგალურია, ყოველთვის მისაღებია აბორტი თუ არსებობს გამონაკლისი შემთხვევები, როდესაც აბორტი დასაშვებია. მე მხედველობაში მაქვს 3 კონკრეტული შემთხვევა. გაუპატიურება ძალადობა, ინცესტი და მესამე შემთხვევა, ეს არის როდესაც საშიშროება, ემუქრება დედას. დედის სიცოცხლეს. Ია. ადლობა. Ია. So number 1 uh, in in regards to rape. Um, I don't think abortion is allowed in in in, in the uh, context of rape. Number one, because you are punishing. I don't think abortion is acceptable when there is rape, because you're punishing an innocent individual for someone else's sins. Okay, and I think that that new individual should be cared for and loved. Right. I think that the Christian position is to care for the innocent, for those who are weak. Okay? Um, I, would, I would say the same thing in the context of incest. People have sinned. People have sinned and the sinners should be punished and they should be punished harshly. Because they've done something that has stripped the dignity of the individual in front of them, namely the mother. But not the children. In, in regards to the, uh, the case of the mother's life being on the line, I think this is a bit more complicated because it's not very clear, like in a medical setting. Um, and, and I think all the, all the boxes need to be kind of checked off and said, okay, yeah, this, this, it is an actual threat. Like, uh, for example, yeah, yes. So th there's been some interesting cases in the United States. For example, um, there was a woman who was pregnant and then they found out that she has cancer. And they wanted to give her chemotherapy. But the chemotherapy would have killed the child. And the mother chose, and the mother chose not to go through with chemotherapy because she wanted to care for her child. I think that's a virtual, self-sacrificing, Jesus-like character. What? Yeah, well, it was the mother's choice to give the priority. So I, I think in a situation like that, a mother and a father can, can make a decision. <laughs> I, on this subject, I highly recommend Christians read Aquinas. He actually deals, um, Thomas Aquinas deals with uh, how to make an ethical decision when your choices are both gonna be suffering, okay? Um, so it's not always clear cut one answer. Did you love Thank you. Shake it well. Sacrifice her life for the 
la CFU da questa crisi, però non c'è il problema di vecchio, uscita da Erte, uscita da parte del mio colore, non sa se che vede tutti a Roma, ma uscita di altri, in quality, a risalire, anche se lo stesso, ma non ha mai uscito fuori, ha un po' di scelta, ha un po' di scelta, ha un po' di scelta. People remain being people and in the image of God. Even if they never actualize the capacities they have. I, I strongly believe this is just a matter of location. Like, so in the womb and out of the womb. Yeah. So if, the, if a child is born and 10 minutes after they're born, we find out they're invalid. And, uh, you know, people can't just kill the child. Can't kill the child. Cannot. Why? Because we see the child. Right. And, and so sometimes when you see so the person in front of you, it's not easy. Did I, did I comment on your question? It's it, Memak's commentary. This gentleman has a comment. If everything is based on seeing, not seeing, the, we, the, these days, we don't need our eyes. Our eyes are not 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 our uh, this gentleman humbly thinks that this is the matter of another view. We are not waves, but uh, we are not waves, but we are not waves. We are not waves. We are not We don't see the waves, but it's enough for us to have a certain piece of equipment for it, which detects the <laughs> I may be mistaken. In these, in these discussions, the the Christ the 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 there is no life which is better than the life. Yeah, um, so here's, in, in ethics, we, we can come up with a standard. And say, um, if, if someone is in a situation where they need our help or they're too weak to, uh, to help themselves, we help them first. Mm. Right. And, and, and that's why the fetus takes priority because they're helpless. Ah, sorry, they, they tend to look more at the features. We cannot yes. protect him or herself so, and cannot decide for himself or herself. So if this building was on fire and, and firefighters came in there and all, and, and all the adults can get themselves out, the, the, ethically, the firefighter should go after those who cannot first. Um, so yes. 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 Mm -hmm. So whether that's children or someone's hurt. Anwins. <laughs> figura. I can have been Miss Sakwanzo Pigura. I'm just mad. Okay, I said, there may be a case where this guy, Anus Dashu, who I'm not going to say, I'm not Baushan. Maybe there's a case that someone is a VIP person. Oh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, well, this, but we, we, should read, we should read the letter of James uh, in the Bible. <laughs> Then James is 
The scripture, Holy Scripture, the Word of God, the Bible, as you want. Which a specific particular reading which prohibits abortion. Yeah, I, I think the Bible says that murder is wrong. Sorry? Murder is wrong. And the shedding of innocent blood is, is wrong. Uh, 
I don't think we can forget that um, when, when Elizabeth, John the Baptist's mother, sees Mary, uh, she, she says, Maria, yeah. and, and says, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Because of the baby in, the womb, in your womb. <laughs> I think there, there is enough biblical evidence to show us that in the womb were people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What I noticed here was that you used that maybe I am doing that as well. While speaking about the person, the word Klaven, Klav, kill, Mokles, kill, kill, was killed, which is not used at all by the doctors. There is another political terminology like getting rid of the fetus, <laughs> making abortion. Yes. Our discussions we kind, of, we kind of declared uh, doctors as the drinkers of blood. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I, I think when we use the correct terminology, naturally the reaction we get, and the dis disgusting reaction we get, is good. Because our conscience has been violated. And we need to use it more. We uh, call the uh, names according to the essence. Yes. yes. Uh, in, terms of, in terms of delivering this message to the doctors, we've got to be a little bit careful. Yeah, and, and we should sit with them and we should talk and serious conversations. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments? Is Involving questions? Um, yes, I don't think you need to be in relationship with any other person to be a person. I would add to that that God is also a person. Not a, human, not a human person. Right? 
What about the Trinity issue? Then? Yeah, yeah. So within the Trinity, there's a relationship. Even if a human being never interacts with another human being, they can always interact with God, and that's relationship. So the i.e. he or she is regarded as a personality or human being in relationship with the God? Yeah, I, I wouldn't define it like that. I wouldn't say... What makes us human is the image of God we're created in. So, when Adam is created, he is a human person without Eve. So, they are individually in the image of God. By individual, do you mean the personality as well, or is it individual? individual uh, <laughs> 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 Asserting anything. Ah. This is just a question. Yeah. How how you view it? Yeah. yeah I, I don't think you need to be in relationship, in ah. relations to other people. <laughs> to be considered a person. <laughs> like like I said in my paper, these the, these are capacities you have. <laughs> when we call the fetus in the womb, we just give mm. it a more Deeper, a deeper impact, let's say, and the deeper mm -hmm. okay. influence. So, okay, I, I don't understand that part. What I am saying is, there is no need to consider the fetus in the womb as, uh, as the living human being that had already been born and has communication and relationship with the environment. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't think, like, what if they're born and they can't have communication and connection with the environment? Meaning, like, deprived? Yeah, okay. yeah. And the, the only difference there is they're outside the womb now. Because if, if, if one is true, if you can kill that, that person in the womb, you should also be able to kill that person outside the room. No, no, I'm not talking about killing. What I'm just saying is there is no need to have such an impact. According to Christian anthropology, uh, the definition of the human being is that he or she is not just a soul and the flesh. The person, the human being may live for a long time, but cannot get formulated as a personality. But this does not give us the ground or the right to kill me. Of course, in the womb, the person should not be killed. But, 
and it has the soul and the flesh as a unity. However, there is no need to be to be calling it as a personality. Kargit, it's a did it did it mat with the so he has to, stop there. Okay. He has to summarize and answer the, uh, uh, this with two sentences. Okay, so I, there might be a, a, a language issue here. Of, like in translation, that I'm misunderstanding something. Um, so maybe we can talk afterwards. <laughs> I'm Dr. Chen Zhang. 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 I'm Dr. Chen Zh